What's going on, smart people? Ever since I got into my graduate program for physics, a lot of people have been curious on what got me into grad school. What was my undergraduate GPA, my major GPA, test scores, all that stuff that in the end got me into a PhD program, and in the same breath, what got me rejected by eight different PhD programs. Today, full disclosure, I am going over everything. Because there are so many moving pieces in the whole grad school application process, it, it's kind of hard to see how they all fit in. What happens if this is a little bit lower, if I do more internships or something? I'm just one person, so my goal for this video is for this to just be one example, one reference of this is what I brought to the table, and by now you probably all already know the results. I was rejected by eight grad schools, I got into two, and now a third one, which I'm now going to be doing my PhD at. But, okay, let's talk numbers. My cumulative GPA in undergrad was a 3.5, and my GPA within my major was around a 3.7. Uh, I think that this was relatively competitive, especially since for my upper level physics classes, all my 400 levels, I got straight A's. So all of my big boy physics classes were A's, and I think that this is kind of important because in certain grad school applications, they will either ask for your major GPA, or sometimes they'll even ask for what were your grades in your upper level physics classes. So if you were someone who maybe has a lower cumulative GPA, but it's because of some gen eds, and you did really well in your physics classes, and you're like, I hope they understand that that was from gen eds and not, yes, they're going to notice that's going to be very important, and it's going to help you. An upward trend is always a good thing. I should also mention that I did actually get a C in undergrad physics. I got a C in classical mechanics. It might have been a C plus. That's not too important. Uh, the thing is, is that it was early on in undergrad, and then after which I started getting straight A's in all of my upper level physics classes, and I think that that made all the difference. So if you slip up one semester, but your transcript demonstrates that you learned from mistakes, or you became more mature, or you just became an overall better student, it's going to speak volumes. So that C was a bit of an outlier, to be honest. I think I even addressed it in my personal statement, which is something that you can do if uh, if you have one of those bad semesters yourself. In fact, sometimes they'll, that'll be part of the prompt. Like if you have anything that you'd like to explain or negative things, like feel free to write about it in your personal statement. Now let's move on to research experience. In undergrad, I did one RU program at Jefferson Lab. It was very computationally intensive. It was in the accelerator division. I didn't publish any papers on it. That would have been fantastic if I did. If you're in a situation where you can publish a paper on your research before getting to grad school, that's an amazing situation to be in. Uh, it didn't work out that way for me. However, I did get to go to a couple conferences to present my research via poster presentations. And in certain cases, that counts as a type of, of publication. And that's definitely something you should include in your resume or your CV. I also included my research experience that was just my senior thesis project because it still was a research project. It was just through my school that every senior had to do. So it wasn't quite as... I want to say as important as an RU program, that stands out more, but I also talked about the senior thesis because I think it further emphasized my strengths with computation and just numerical methods as a whole. So just to be clear though, I actually did end up doing another RU program after I applied to those 10 schools, got my eight rejections and the two acceptances, after which I took some time to graduate courses and also did another research experience to boost my resume. And that was on my resume for the second time around that I applied to grad school, strictly for NMSU. But the first round of admissions, all those acceptances, I say all those, those two acceptances uh, were based off of one research experience and one senior thesis. But now, the moment that everyone has been waiting for, GRE scores. Let's not waste any time. Let's just let's just jump right into it. You see, the thing about the physics GRE is, if this was five months ago, I would have been much more hesitant on making this video talking about scores because I was extremely embarrassed on what I got. I was, what does this mean about my understanding of physics? To get a score this low, it must mean I might I must not really understand this stuff. Uh, it, was, it was a weird time. It was a weird time to be doing well academically and have a, have a test score that says otherwise. Uh, since then, I've become much more confident and much more reassured that I really do understand this, and I think that there's plenty of evidence to back this. I mean, I got into grad school, for God's sakes. Like, clearly, I know physics. Uh, but, enough about, but enough about me. Let's talk about you. Let's talk about these scores. Okay, the first time that I took the physics GRE, I got third percentile. 
I've, I've mentioned before that my scores were bad. I don't think anyone probably expected them to be that bad. Third percentile, that means 97% of people who took that test did better than me. Uh, what does the physics GRE mean? So if it means what I think it's supposed to mean, which is testing you on your understanding of physics, if it really does that, and I get third percentile, if it does that, that does mean, it means I do not know physics. If that many people did that much better than me, I do not know physics. That's what it means. Now, I got straight A's in my physics classes in undergrad. If I fail the physics GRE, maybe that means my education at ODU was not as good as I thought it was. That was a real concern of mine and of grad schools, right? The physics GRE is supposed to assess what you know. It's supposed to be a means of interpreting what your grades meant at your university if you're applying elsewhere. Uh, so if I get poor scores on the physics jury, it must mean that, you know, maybe I was just taking really easy classes, maybe I cheated or something like that. So then I move 2,000 miles away, I put the ball in their court, and I take classes at NMSU and I still get A's, end up being classical mechanics. That was a huge moment for me because it meant you know, I, I didn't get a bad education at ODU. In fact, I think it was a great one. Uh, it has nothing to do with my understanding of physics. I still plan on burning the test to the ground one day. I am sorry for the rant. I just haven't talked about my actual scores before, and I think it warranted an explanation. Uh, so I'll probably make an entire video on the physics GRE in the future, so I'm going to stop ranting. I did end up taking it again when I reapplied to NMSU, and in this case I got the 35th percentile, which is a good amount better. I think a good score, a score that will actually start to help you in your applications, is around 50% and up for a lot of grad schools. Uh, that's at least what I've heard, and I think a little bit lower than the 50th percentile won't necessarily hurt you for most schools, and I think 35 percentile is around that threshold, probably the lower end. Uh, I don't really give a shit, to be honest. Moving on to the regular GRE, for verbal reasoning, I got 70th percentile. For quantitative reasoning, I got 75th percentile, and for analytical writing, I got 17th, so apparently I'm not a very strong writer, and I only took that test once. Probably the only other thing that's worth mentioning, just to really give you a complete picture of what I was on paper, is to talk a little bit about who I got my letters of recommendation from. Uh, so the first time around, meaning when I applied to all those 10 schools, not the most recent time where I just applied to NMSU, first time around I got a letter from my research advisor from my RU program. I also got a letter from someone who was my research advisor for my senior thesis, but he was also my former professor. I had him for e and and for atomic physics, both classes I got A's in, so he could speak for me academically as well as how I did research, which I thought was a good reference. And I also got a letter from uh, the head of admissions at ODU for, for the physics department, and he was also my professor for thermodynamics, who, and I got an A in that class, so another person who might have some clout under the name as well as could speak for my academics. What's also important is with these references, I got to know them pretty well, so it wasn't them just saying uh, they did well in my class. They really got to know me so they could speak for my character and my personality, which is pretty important. Don't just go to someone and say, hey, I did well in your class, can I have a letter of recommendation? Maybe try to get to know the professor or the research advisor a bit better. The second time around, so when I was applying to just NMSU, I kept the JLab reference as well as the head of admissions at ODU reference, and I swapped the senior thesis reference for my most recent RU, where my research advisor for that was also my computational physics professor, a course where I got an A in, and I did research in the field that I was saying aligned with my research interests, so it seemed like a, not a more helpful reference, but maybe a more helpful reference. I think that pretty much sums it up, actually. I try to be as transparent as possible in this video. If I forgot something, feel free to ask me in the comments section, and I will see you guys there.